just, for, just from a planning perspective, and obviously we're going to hear a wording for refusal, but obviously this was previously a police station, and there would have been presumably traffic movements associated with the police station. And again, I don't know if we can get, that, that, that's mentioned in the report, but I don't know if we can get any feedback from officers about what kind of traffic patterns you get with a police station compared to what we're likely to get with a nursery. I'm just concerned that a planning inspector, if this goes to appeal, would look at, well, it used to be a police station, there was lots of traffic associated with the police station, therefore, are we on solid ground if we, if we refused it uh, in those terms? Uh, thank you through you, Chair. I mean, obviously, yes, there would have been vehicle movements um, associated with the, the previous use. Um, we don't have any, any details of those, but if, um, if, there was a, if there was a refusal around the grounds of um, traffic generation and parking and this sort of thing related to the proposed development, um, the, the inspector, I imagine, will take into account um, the traffic generation and parking and what have you that was um, generated by the previous um, use or indeed you know, um, a similar use that could potentially take place on the site without any um, additional planning uh, permission being required. Okay, I think everybody that wanted to speak in actually had something to say. Uh, Irene? Extension is considered 
to exceed the required interface distances between um, new existing new and new proposed uh, residential development. There are no pro proposals to provide um, an additional parking alongside this proposal, um, and these, these concerns are being raised by the local residents. However, it's considered the site is in a sustainable location adjacent to the train station, um, acceptable bus routes, and close to um, shops and facilities. And so, for these reasons, we consider the proposal is, um, is acceptable. Oh, sorry, acceptable. Oh. Um, replicates the appearance of the existing dwelling, does not conflict with the advice contained in both, both national and local plan policy, and is therefore recommended for approval subject to the attached conditions. And if I could just um, highlight to my this item was on the late list, there's been a fair of objection as well. Okay, we do have a petition. We do have a petition on this. Would the lead petitioner like to come forward to speak on this matter? You find it, but can I might confirm there at the bottom? If you can just press that to turn it off, you've got your red light. So, um, if I can ask you to state your name and address, and then you have up to, up to five minutes to speak to the committee. My own name and address? Yes, it is. Um, my name is Michelle Moglin, I live at 21 Proctor Road, and I'm the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Morris, who live at Five Cable Road, and I'm reading this on behalf of them. Okay, I'll let you know when you've got one minute left. Okay, yeah. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank you for coming out and conducting a site visit, as we felt this was important for you to see. We are objecting on the following grounds. As you will see in the report Mrs. Day prepared, a planning application for 22 flats in four two-storey blocks was originally refused on the following grounds. The proposed development would result in a site in the building immediately adjacent to the carriageway of Grover Road, which could result in conflict and potential hazard between pedestrians and vehicles. The proposal would result in an unacceptable overlooking of the private garden of Five Cable Road. A planning application for 18 flats in two two-storey blocks was then approved, even though the siting of the building did not change. Now an application for five flats has been submitted, which will take a total to 23, which is one more than the original 22 that was refused. The proposed development, by reason of its size, depth, both the height and massing would have an unacceptably adverse impact on the immunities of the properties immediately adjacent to the site and surrounding area by reason of overlooking, loss of privacy and visually overbearing and intrusive impact. It is inappropriate for this type of village. Such a high building would be totally out of keeping with the neighbouring properties. Mr and Mrs Morris will lose their privacy in their home and garden more so than they do now. This will have an enormous impact on their enjoyment of their home and garden. And according to the Prescription Act 1832, if the window has been had an uninterrupted view for 20 years, it earns the right of light. And as Mr and Mrs Morris have lived in their home for 50 years, we feel that this is relevant. The proposed building will cause overshadowing and loss of light to the property. The report that Mrs. Day has provided for this meeting states that the flat nearest to Five Grover Road, but at which is Five Cable Road, has a side hand window, which is a secondary window, and which is approximately 27 metres from the nearest first floor window on the side of the outrigger of Five Cable Road. The relationship between the two windows is of so there would be no direct overlooking. But at 27 metres, this exceeds the required interface distance of facing windows of 25 metres. Unfortunately, with this being such a big issue, approximate measures are not good enough and we would require the distance to be measured accurately, as there's only a matter of two metres difference, which obviously is very important to Mr and Mrs Morris. <coughs> Mrs Day also states in her report recommended conditions one being that before any building work can take place, there needs to be, in writing, details of secure covered cycle parking. And as you may have seen from your site visit, the area around the flats is very small, and we cannot see any area that would be suitable for cycle storage. The proposal would cause overdevelopment of the site with regards to the percentage of immunity space in relation to the building. The proposal does not include any extra car parking spaces and 
and reason for this being that some residents do not use their spaces. This is irrelevant as you cannot predict what future residents may do, i.e. they may use the space. It is already a highway issue with regards to car parking in the area. The surrounding area is already at full capacity, so you could not guarantee that the residents would get space in the public car park opposite. The public car park has approximately 35 spaces that can only be used for a maximum 15 hours per stone and return is prohibited within one hour. This car park is not intended to be used as a regular car park space for residents with these flats. These spaces should be for visitors to Hoylake. Can I just tell you how long it is? Okay. Um, Broken Road is a very narrow road at just under 3.3 metres wide which we believe is just short of the required 3.7 metres on the original approval notice. There is only one room for one car to pass at a time, and this is a hazard to motorists and pedestrians alike. The proposal could lead to vehicles overhanging the roads surrounding the area to the detriment of other road users. Insufficient parking spaces will adversely affect the immunity of the surrounding properties through roadside parking on the very busy and narrow roads surrounding the site. Um, there is a problem with the logistics of the development, there will be problems with regards to materials, equipment needed for the build, there's no room on site for these items, and the areas surrounding the site is a public car park, which you probably couldn't use. Um, there will be called a serious hazard within the area with large pieces of equipment coming and going at all times of day. Uh, the thank, site you, thank you, I'm going to have to draw it some closer. I, I, I can obviously hear from what you're saying that people have difficulties with, with regards to the construction. Okay, thank you very much. Would the applicant or agent like to come forward to speak on this? No? Okay, uh, would the board council like to come forward? If you can, just state your name for the record, please. I'm, I'm Councillor Jerry for this. Well, this is a fascinating site actually because this is the 17th uh, planning application on this site in the last 30 odd years. I've been a councillor now just about 20th year, and of all the things I've had to do as a councillor, this is the one site which has given me the most aggro actually because they keep coming up with ideas. It's an extremely narrow site. Uh, which you've been told is 3.3 meters. Uh, the road is only 3.3. Very narrow site, really hanging over onto the railway line. And I have to walk up and down this road quite often. And the footway is only one third of a meter, it's only a foot of the total of a footway. And you may actually keep falling off the bay of the footway when you try to walk down it, but it's so narrow. So it's an extremely difficult site. As the uh, person has just spoken has told you, there have been further applications and there was an agreement eventually to let them build on this site. But they've tried over the years just to be passing. They want to have a motor, motor sales site there, a heavy goods vehicle parking, a caravan park, a picnic area for children, all that, and a gymnasium. The gymnasium was actually approved by the council, but they never went ahead and did it. Eventually, there were flats to also an agreement to build these flats, which you just heard from the previous speaker. It just beggars belief now to think that they want to put another story on top of the flats that are already there. And as the speaker just said, it would then uh, make the total number of flats more than the number that had been previously refused. Um, so, clearly, a main ground of refusal, I would suggest, is that the size and the bulk of the building is just too high, especially too great, especially in such an narrow area. So the building itself, just too big for the area. The road, alongside the Roman Road, is extremely, exceedingly narrow. You can't pass. Two cars can't pass on it. Almost two people can't hold it pass on it. It's very, very narrow. And to have more traffic going down there would be pretty chaotic. So there is a serious problem of um, 
traffic on that road. If they had found these extra five flats, they'd have cars, quite rightly. And so they'd have more cars in the area. No one else for to park because of no parking provisions made on this application. And the what car park that is nearby has got limits on this they couldn't park there all day and night. So on the grounds of parking and traffic, on the grounds of it being far too bulky for the site, I'm going to ask you to refuse it. Now there is another one which we mentioned, that's the overlooking. And I do feel really, really sorry for the occupants of the three Cable Road because they lived there happily for just next to 50 years. And to suddenly find this building coming shooting up over their fence. It's pretty tough. Although I do recognise, and the officer told me this, that there is quite a reasonable separation distance and these we actually saw this typically last week. But they still are alarmed and concerned about it. They are going to be overlooked from a distance, but they are going to be overlooked. So thank you very much for coming on the site visit last week and thank you for listening to me. Okay, can I do something missing? David? Uh, yes, thank you very much, Chair. Um, as a resident of Hoylake and Mel since about 1947, don't try and work since about 1947, um, this site has been characterised over many years now by its attempt to make inappropriate overdevelopment of the site for various reasons. Uh, We've either had uh, parking places for heavy vehicles, as uh, the Ward Council has alluded to, uh, and general overdevelopment of the site, attempts to cram as much pos as possible onto this very narrow strip of land between the road and the railway line. So I, the site visit really just uh, reinforced my previous perceptions and, and knowledge, great knowledge of that particular site. I think it's a totally inappropriate uh, solution to the problem. It's definitely overdevelopment, and I would be wanting to move refusal uh, on grounds which I'll elaborate upon in a minute and let obviously like other people to uh, come in and make a contribution to the discussion. Thanks Chair. Thanks David. Irene? No, I mean I quite agree. I mean it's the middle of the day and the car park was almost full and it is certainly very overcrowded. The road is very narrow. You can only get one car through and I quite agree with David. Any other comments? Okay. Sorry, Pat? Yeah, I've got a question really. I mean, the new positioner uh, questioned whether the site, which, you know, we all, anyone who's on the site visit, we've heard how narrow it, the site is, whether it could accommodate the site and storage condition. And I think that's a very, very good question. Uh, so my question would be, is there any existing site and storage for the existing 10 flats? And where would the proposed, uh, how would the proposed condition be met if approved? Thank you. Through you, Chair. Um, where existing site and storage is, I'm afraid I, I couldn't clarify, but certainly as part of this application, the applicant submitted amended plans which indicated um, areas on the frontage where site and storage would go as part of the site, which wouldn't affect any existing parking or Thank you, Chair. Um, this was the second site visit that I thought was really useful because on paper this looks okay, but when you get to the road and you see that how narrow the road is and the height of the proposed development is certainly smacked of over development uh, to me as well. And like uh, Mrs. Noel, I would be concerned that this will be um, visually intrusive and also uh, result in a loss of privacy. So, having listened to what the members have heard uh, said tonight, I'd also be voting against this one, unfortunately. Okay, if there's nobody else, then I'll ask David to move if you Yes, thank you, Chair. On the ground, we're going to be The proposed extension by... Mike, please. Sorry, sorry, Kate. Apologies for that. Um, my move for refusal would be that the proposed extension, by reason of its scale and bulk, would be out of keeping with the character of the existing building and would have an adverse impact on the visual amenity of the area as a whole and is thereby contrary to unitary development plan policy HS4 by moving refusal on this ground, Chair. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you. David's moved refused to have a seconder. Ian, thank you. All those in favour of refusal? That's unanimous. Okay, so if we can revert back to the agenda, please. Uh, we're going to agenda item 5, which is pages 21 to 30. Could we have a presentation, please? Thank you, Chair. Through you, Chair. This application was also deferred in the last point committee to allow members to visit the site. A qualified petition containing 32 signatures has been received and three separate representations. Um, the main thrust of the objection was related to an increase in traffic and parking. Um, there are sufficient schools and nurseries within the area, an increase in noise due to the outside play, and an increase in traffic. This application is also for the change of use of the former police station to a children's nursery for up to 80 children. The same conditions are attached in this report, which strip the hours of operations from 7.30 to 6.30 p.m., Monday to Friday. The application site is within a designated primary residential area, and the site is surrounded by a mix of flats and houses. There is existing parking at the front of the site, which is accessed for Queen's Road and will remain um, in use for parking. Again, the proposal has been assessed against both national and local plan policy with specific reference to UDP policy HS12 and HS15. The main thrust of these policies is to ensure the immunities of the surrounding occupiers are protected from undue noise and general disturbance, and there is satisfactory vehicle access on site. Um, and parking is achieved <coughs> is reasonable and the reasonable provision is made for setting down and picking up the children. Objections have been received which relate to noise emanating from the site and part of the rear building is to be demolished to make a larger outdoor play space. There's a condition again attached to this report which limits the hours of use of the play area and restricts the number of children um, who use it steady one time. In addition, there's further conditions requiring the submission of details for an acoustic fence to minimise any noise that would be um, detrimental to surrounding occupiers. For, whilst the nursery is likely to create an increase in traffic movement and parking demands, this is likely to be staggered. In addition, the location of the site close to the town centre offers a greater potential for link trips and access on foot. The net impact of vehicle movements and parking demands is not likely to be that of a level that could sustain an objection on highway grounds. So for these reasons, the proposal is considered to be acceptable and recommended for approval subject to the attached conditions. Okay, we do have a qualified petition for this. Is the lead petitioner want to speak on the matter? No, so would council would like to speak on this? No? Okay then, if uh, I can open this up to committee then. David? Yes, sir. thank you, Chair. Um, I've in fact lived within 50 yards of this particular site for well over 20 years, not recently, but a few years ago. And I think the big difference between this application and the one that we approved at Well Lane is that there are adequate parking facilities within the site itself. Perhaps Keith could enumerate or tell us how many parking spaces there are. There are certainly quite a lot of them. But that's another story. Um, but that's the difference. This place is in a better area in terms of uh, access from uh, parking and being able to get to the place. Obviously, Cable Road is a busy road, just as most of the roads in the borough are, but it's nowhere near as congested as the, right, at the site surrounding the Well Lane Police Station. So I believe, on balance, this one is acceptable because it does provide facilities for parking and will provide a welcome uh, addition to the area in terms of uh, nursery accommodation. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, thank you, Chair. The, the, the submitted drawings indicate that there are eight parking uh, spaces on the frontage of the building um, that were meant to the front door. And that was complied with SPD4? Um, it, it won't because SPD4 talks about parking in terms of maximums. Anybody else, Stuart? Um, well, I was again drawn to the, uh, uh, 
remarks and, and again took a look at the, um, uh, the work that the applicants have done to, um, uh, to report to us their findings on those. Um, and, and this time, in, in what they describe as NSR 1, which, uh, which is for Lighthouse Road, um, they actually found the uh, noise levels to exceed to exceed the, um, uh, the serious disturbance threshold set by the World Health Organization. Um, so I, I'm not, that being the case, I'm not sure why we, we've used the same form of words to say that it now only avoids, well, well, it doesn't, so it exceeds it by, well, it, it, it exceeds it by 9 um, dBA, uh, which I think I'm right in saying that the uh, uh, that the DBS scale is not only against the logarithmic, which means that an increase of 9 dBA will be um, over twice as loud as, um, twice as loud as 55. So we're not looking at it in terms of it being 9 more squeaks of noise, we're looking at it in fact being twice as loud as it would have been um, had it just met the um, serious disturbance level. Um, that being the case, um, um, based on what I commented on a uh, previous application so far was uh, the benefits of like an acoustic uh, barriers in an open, uh, an open air environment and what is going on in all sorts of actions and going up to about twice the level of noise um, that, um, uh, in terms of the, um, the, the trigger for serious disturbance, it would strike me that this is eminently refusable on the grounds of uh, of disturbance to, um, uh, to 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 the inhabitants uh, of four uh, lighthouse road because again it's for 80 uh, children again it's for groups of 10 going out and it was on that basis that the uh, the noise measurements were a bit calculated and again we're talking about 22 minutes. Uh, child. So all the same concerns um, that I've, I, I, I've already mentioned on, on the previous slide, but not the same application, with the exception, uh, except with the exception of, of, uh, of highway grounds, uh, exist. Um, so for that reason, for the sake of consistency that my concern is one of, of, of noise and, and the proximity to, uh, to residential dwellings, I'm not able to support this, uh, this particular application. Thank you. David? Yeah, I just, I just I think it's necessary to clarify the situation. In fact, uh, if you look at the bottom left-hand corner of the plan number four, that is the house I used to live at, and it's not for Lighthouse Road, it's for King's Gap. Lighthouse Road is an access road to the rear of all the properties on King's Gap that go against it, and the rear of the Queen's Road uh, houses, as you can see, the one next to the police station immediately north of it, three, and then five, seven, all the rest of them. The frontages are on, Ke on a, a, a Queen's Road. The rears, which are garages and gardens and greenhouses and goodness knows what else, are what occupies Lighthouse Road. So whatever noise is going to be transmitted is not going to be going to the front of any house at all. In fact, having had children in the back garden of my own house number four, we've probably created more noise than the kids are going to make anyway. So I don't think if you understand that perception of it, the impact on Lighthouse Road is going to be negligible to non-existent. Thanks, Chair. Before I bring anybody else in, could I just ask the officers to clarify exactly where the children's play area is on this room, please? I can't see it. I can't see it's a problem. 
I just ask the gentleman of the bank what application you're aiming for? The one you know the old tavern. Number seven? Yeah. Oh, you so you know that, don't you? Yeah. Oh, that's fine. I just didn't want you to be hanging around if you've got it a bit later. That's yeah. fine. Okay, um, can we just move to agenda item 8 then, which is pages 49 to 54 in your hands? And can we have a presentation when you're ready? Yes, thank you, Chair. Through you, Chair. This application has been referred to the Planning Committee because the agent is an elected member. The application is for a single story rear extension and a change in position in an existing external clue. The application site is a commercial unit within a grape shop in a primary residential area. The property was last used as a hot food takeaway and the nearest residential property um, is Rome Court Flats, some 47 metres away. The application has been assessed against both national um, and other plan policies. Um, particular reference to SPD3. The document states that restaurants are generally acceptable provided they don't harm nearby residential amenities and recommends a 40 metre separation distance. And this can be achieved in this instance. The proposed extension and um, extraction um, body are considered to be acceptable and not harm the character of the area or any uh, post residential properties. So it's, the application is recommended for approval subject to the attached conditions. Um, this is uh, for those who don't know, this is uh, Council of Liberties uh, new company. Um, so um, that's the reason why it's important to be more into Council. Okay, is there anybody who'd like to speak on this at all? Thank you for answering that, that point. Uh, that was going to be my question because uh, Rivergate Limited doesn't appear on any council's declaration of interest, so I was perplexed as to who this was. So uh, perhaps some of you can't Council of Doubt and ask them to register Rivergate. Okay. That's a good point, thank you. Okay. Anybody want to make any other comments? No, do we have a mover for this, please? Do we have a mover now? Mover? Thank you. Christina? Do we have a seconder? Thank you. Tom? All those in favour of acceptance subject to conditions listed? Okay. If we can now move to agenda item 10, which is planning applications decided under delegated powers between the 9th of July and the 6th of August. Are we happy to know those or are any comments? Uh, just a brief comment. Just a brief comment on the, uh, on the first item, page 63, sorry, the second item. Um, we've got a situation where we've refused an application for something which has been retrospectively taken action upon. I just would like uh, the officers to confirm that enforcement proceedings are in progress on that particular item. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Will you, Chair? Uh, yes, the enforcement proceedings are in progress. Um,
outdoors, whether it's specialised in the same area, or you know, whether it's just occasionally access to range, there may be no reason to put in place uh, the same arrangements that they have the SDA. We have a regime in place now, so it leads towards a more um, scheme delegation. I think that, that's something that we probably need the officers to go away and answer. Okay, so um, for uh, September, the site visits then would be on the 12th of September. Um, 12th of September, yeah. And we'll receive that um, notification of all the times on that. Which I've got my phone chair. I'm um, just a bit my apologies because I'm going to try on that date. No longer to the way Okay, thank you. Okay, um, being no other urgent business, then I'll declare the meeting closed. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Thank you. Thank you. And to your comments,